And of course, the, uh, we know the uh, Rockefellers have been accumulating gold overseas. They're not buying it here, they're buying it overseas. But they can't let the American people know. And of course, they've got to uh, keep driving the price down to discourage people from buying. Because when prices are going up, people buy. When prices are manipulated down, why an awful lot of people will sell. Uh, so they, they, they begin to sort of uh, doubt their judgment. They say, well, gee, it keeps going down. Might as well sell. How are they driving it down now? Is it through the commodity market? Is it because uh, some of the central banks are dumping uh, gold? How are they manipulating the price of gold and silver down? Well, they occasionally sell uh, physical gold or get somebody else to do it. Um, and that's when they want to knock down the London market, which is a physical market. But most of their trading is done via derivatives, and uh, they will purchase the derivatives from a derivative writer who will in turn you know, cover their position. So if the government says we want to uh, short a million ounces of gold, then someone will write them a derivative that, you know, you just sold it, and that means they, in turn, if they cover their position, uh, what they'll have to do is go into the market and buy uh, and sell gold. And so uh, that creates a false market. Now, when individuals or institutions do it, it's one thing, but when government does it, it's another. And when government does it, it creates a real problem because they have an endless supply of money. I mean, they can just keep on printing it as long as they want, and all the losses uh, just go on the balance sheet, and the American public pays for it. And this goes on in all markets, just not gold and silver. And so that's how they do it. And uh, you can you can watch them. They, they do the same thing on the long side of the, long side of the market. Uh, with the Standard Poor's 500 index and the NASDAQ and, of course, the Dow and, uh, and, and other indexes that would make the stock market go up. And today is another in the, the hundreds and hundreds of examples where the government come in the, in the market in the last 20 minutes t- took it from minus 40 to plus 40. And everybody knows what's going on. Now, most of Wall Street has not publicly talked about it. But in Sandy's issue, I have two tapes, and there are two panels on CNBC where they discussed market manipulation by the United States government. And that is extraordinarily important because the cat is now visibly out of the bag. And so what is the next step? Well, there'll be complaints here and complaints there. How am I, how am I supposed to trade the market when it's rigged? And I think that's the most important thing, Big Bob, is for people to realize the market is rigged, the commodity markets are rigged, the price of oil is rigged, the price of gold and silver is rigged. And if you're rigging the market with the full consent of the government, why you can make an awful lot of money. And anybody who thinks that these these are altruistic people who are rigging the market and they're not playing it and making vast fortunes have to be incredibly naive. In fact, well, the, the government looks the other way. While their order takers, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, etc., uh, they front run their orders. That's how they make so much money. And it's a license to steal, just like the ownership of the Fed. I don't know if you've seen the uh, fascinating article. It's the latest Rolling Stones, but it's got quite a bit of play. It's on Goldman Sachs. It was in my last issue. I I, I mean, they call it government Sachs. I'm looking forward to your analysis of it. I mean, basically, they point out that Larry Summers now, Larry Summers was the uh, Secretary of Treasury in the Clinton administration, really responsible for most of the problems we've got, you know, doing away with the, uh, uh, certainly the, the various bills, the uh, the Graham uh, bill, uh, pardon me, the, um, uh, the, the original Glass-Steagall bill, uh, Larry Summers did that. But Larry Summers is really uh, primarily responsible for everything going on. And, of course, as a result of that, Goldman Sachs had made a lot of money. And, and, and suddenly Larry Summers went and he spent, I think, uh, a day at Goldman Sachs to advise them, got a hundred and 
twenty-five thousand dollars for one day's one day's of advice. That's pretty good, uh, pretty good money. And now, of course, Larry Summers is the apparently the uh, chief of the Council of Economic Advisors in the Obama administration. Many people think that he will be the next head of the Federal Reserve System. But of course, his ties to Goldman Sachs, as the ties of literally everybody else to Goldman Sachs, are really incredible. I mean, two very influential secretaries of the Treasury, Robert Rubin and Henry Paulson, come from Goldman Sachs. Although Timothy Geithner is not a, a Goldman Sachs alumni, his chief of staff, Mark pa- Patterson, is, or at least he was the lobbyist for Goldman Sachs. That is an amazing article pointing out how they really run the government. And they have for 100 years, along with their buddies. And they all, you know, have their time. It used to be Reed Dillon after the war, and then J.P. Morgan Chase, and now it's Goldman Sachs. Citigroup used to be in there. They still are, but not the, as big a piece, you know, of the action. And, um, you know, this is why Joe Kennedy filled his sons in on what goes on in Wall Street. And that's why Jack Kennedy wanted to do away with the Federal Reserve. It's one of the reasons he was murdered. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Joe Kennedy was a street fighter. He was a tough, tough Irishman. And uh, I knew him fairly well. I used to caddy for him. <laughs> and uh, I was a boy then. I was 13 to 14 years old. I guess it was 14. And... Uh, and I knew his, uh, the two daughters and the mother, and I knew Teddy, uh, but I didn't know Jack nor his older brother who had died in the war. But his father filled him in on everything that was going on. And not that he, Joe Kennedy, was any better or any worse than the crowd that's there. He took advantage of it. But he wanted to make sure they got their comeuppance. And that's why Jack did what he did. And And Jack also wanted to get rid of the CIA and wanted Israel to get rid of their atomic weapons. And that's why you had Mossad, Tremendex, the CIA, and the FBI in on the whole thing. You're in on the murder of of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Anybody doubt that? Really needs to get our four tapes set on Kennedy. The two of them, one's Kennedy assassination, the other's the update. And you'll hear people telling about the meeting the night before. The FBI and the CIA were there planning it. Twenty percent. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and suddenly Bob Chapman is talking about how the, this cap-and-trade legislation is going to result, in effect, in a 20% tax on just about everything you buy, your products you buy, and the price of your electricity. Of course, the price of electricity is probably going to double. Uh, they're talking about $1,400 per family uh, for home here within a year or two, a couple of years. Of course, they're lying about what it's going to cost. He says it's only going to cost $140, and, but they, they they lie about everything. They know they're intentionally going to raise the price of electricity so that we won't be able to afford electricity. And, of course, the cap and trade concept is really a cut and trade. The cut is uh, cutting out our manufacturing. Our manufacturing are going to move overseas to wherever they can get cheap labor and cheap power because you can't function in industry without power. They're going to drive. They're going to cut out what's little remaining of our, our, our the manufacturing. And, of course, we're going to simply trade it to other countries. It's all part of their plan to impoverish the American people. I think... The average individual finds it difficult, though, to believe that the people working the highest echelon of our government want to destroy our our industrial base and lay more people off. I mean, after all, President Obama keeps talking about wanting to get people back to work. But this cap-and-trade will lose far more jobs than we'll ever make with it, won't we? About five million for openers. And uh, I have another survey in this uh, last issue. I forget which country it was. I think it was Sweden. It was a disaster there, and Spain, Spain was even worse, and uh, Obama says that Spain was his model. And uh, Obama the, doesn't, doesn't know anything about anything. 
there. Of course, they've lost two and a half jobs for every job that they've uh, they've made, and of course, it's cost a fantastic amount of money. And that's exactly what it's going to cost here. And they are going to destroy our economy. That's what it's all about. It's an attack on our economy using the phony uh, rationalization uh, that we're all going, of course, to be destroyed by global warming. Now, since we have global cooling, they call out climate change. We've got to stop climate change. Actually, the world is cooling today. There's a new EPA report out, totally suppressed by the controlled medium. And there was an article to the credit of Wall Street Journal on it, uh, talking about the, the scientist uh, working for EPA who came up with the report, who told, was told you must never release this report. You cannot do any more work on global warming because your report, of course, is contrary to what the administration's agenda is. Go right ahead.